I am Caucasian. Hispanic. Asian. My dad is English. I'm African American and European. Most of my friends are either white or Asian. Most of my friends are white. Mostly white and Asian. I live in Los Altos and there's hella white people. I guess I hang out with white people. In Taiwan, the education, you would say it's good, but it's like robots. You have to like memorize everything. When you memorize it, and then you're like, what did I learn today? Huh, whatever, just memorize it. Just make our teacher happy. And then after school, we would go to after school classes where we learn same things, just more worksheets and, and textbooks. The quality of the school was a lot better in Afghanistan since it's like it's been run down for a while and not that many girls really like went to school that often. It was just like hard going to school and like walking on the streets. So here it was like a lot safer. I could actually go to school and I could learn and then I could I felt like I could actually do something with my life. I stay home for about two to three months and then I finally went to school. And I thought the classes was going to be really hard and the first class I went into, everyone was nice to me. Even though I don't understand what they're saying, but sometimes I would understand them by body language. Yeah, they're pretty strict, really strict on grades. Uh, sixth grade, yeah, I had a really strict teacher. If you get one point lower than 90%, you would get hit on your hand with a ruler and it's painful. Like, she goes full out. You can like see her face shaking when she hits. I was like, oh God. When it comes to like grading and stuff, America and South Africa, they're pretty much the same. They're pretty like, oh, if you get a B, cool. But if you're in Taiwan, you get a B, you're going to hell. You're not gonna, you're gonna be a hobo. That's what parents say. I was placed in an ELD program, which was the English Learners Department for people who doesn't know English very well. At first, the words confuses me because in Chinese, some words they put in together, like woman. That's the first word I learned when I first moved here. When you separate those words, it's totally different words in Chinese. So sometimes I would think the word have a different meaning than what it is. And I thought my mind would go insane because sometimes I hear people saying Chinese, but actually they're speaking English. High school, we would have one grade with two classes. For example, seventh grade. Seventh grade in South Africa is high school. You have 7A, 7B. And 7A would be all girls, 7B all boys. And we would be in a separate level because we're not supposed to, you know, talk to boys because uh, teachers will call us sluts or whores because we talk to boys. So with the weddings, it's... It's different from the American weddings. We like combine the two. So at first, the bride doesn't know who she's marrying, to be honest, she just doesn't know who she's marrying. So in Afghanistan, it's, it's pretty fancy there. They go like all out. It's like a bajillion people. It's like everyone you've ever known because all Afghans are somehow related. Um, in Afghanistan though, some weddings, they separate you. So they separate the girls and the men, which is kind of hard, but you know, you don't do that in American weddings. But then coming here, most of the weddings, like, we're allowed to all, like, sit together. Because, like, in our religion, in Islam, like, men and women usually shouldn't be together. So what they do is they, you, you sit on this couch, and then they put this shawl over you. That's when you meet who you're marrying. She doesn't know before. She doesn't know anything about him before. And neither does he. They, like, they just get married. They live their life from that point together. And my grandma's there and she prays before we eat. Like Americans, they usually um, say grace before you guys eat. She does this one prayer and then, then we're all allowed to eat. Like around nine o'clock, we eat dinner. That's how I gain weight super fast for eating those delicious curries. My family's Pakistani. We eat curries every day. My family, they're really religious, so we 
care what we eat. After um, 9-11, it was hard because a lot of people judged a lot of um, Muslims and Afghans. A, a lot of people here are mainly white and there's not that much of a diversity. So not all of them were that rude, but most of them were just very judgmental. I was forced to be a Muslim. I had to wear all the, the scarves and wear black long sleeves and, and long, I don't even know what it's called in English. In America, there is so much more freedom compared to South Africa. Yes, there's a lot of freedom. Because I, now I live with my mom and she doesn't care what I believe in. So I have freedom of religion. After a few weeks of school, I finally got to meet a new friend. At first, we didn't talk to each other at all. We just awkwardly standing there playing our own, playing in the playground. Then I found out she was moved from another country and that little detail had made us friends because we both have the same situation. It was good moving here. It was hard leaving there, but then it was also like, I knew I had to leave because I, I just wasn't going anywhere there.